down in the depths of Brooklyn, in the shittiest basement I've ever seen. There's some guys with some cameras, and they look like they'd be easy to rob. It's called Smut Cave. They got recording equipment here. They got laptops. They got cash. Two drum kits. You want it? They got it. Come and steal it. Ladies, come and get it. Come and get all the merchandise. Easily stealable. All the things you need here at the Smart Cave. Smart Cave. Smart Cave. Smart Cave. Smart Cave. Hi, welcome back. Hello. We're here on the Smart Cave. And I am your faithful host, the Spelunker. Here again with another wondrous artist who has wandered into our cave to be examined here with. Joining us today, the very influential artist of New York City, Mr. Nicholas Gazin. Hi, Spelunker. Hello, Nick. Good to have you here today. I wish I could say it was good to be here. Your art, the art of Nick Gazin, uh, exists in a number of forms right now, which I'd like to get into. But um, I like to start things at the beginning. Uh, let's talk about childhood. What were your early artistic influences? What made you say yes to art? Well, my... My... My British... <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. My biggest early childhood influences were probably... Um, well, my biggest childhood early influences, um, 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 my biggest influences as a child were <clears throat> my mother. My mother is my favorite artist. Um, I really love Egon Schiele, the German expressionist. And of course, being a comic book reader as a child, my main influences were mostly comic book artists, uh, Mike Allred, Sam Keith, um, guys like that, um, uh, and various others that I forget off the top of my head. Uh, David Lapham, who did Stray Bullets and does Stray Bullets. Uh, but my mother, my mother first and foremost. Uh, she is uh, a great artist, undervalued. She went to Yale, she can really paint. Um, she's real good. My mother. Your collaborations with the music world are numerous and well-documented. Uh, you have worked collaboratively with artists on t-shirts, album covers, uh, posters, uh, discography box set art, uh, special mugs, statuettes. I think we had it with the first few. Most of the things you said were a complete lie. That's, that's my interview process. Was there a question or were you just going to say some lies about me? What's the collaborative process like with these artists? Is there a Nick Gazin approach to working with an artist for designing art around music, or is each artist unique in the way they approach you about collabs? In general, like I hardly even get approached by musicians or companies or people I'm not already a big fan of. Like, uh, you know, I was DJing Waves all the time when Waves was like, hey, you want to do stuff? And I was like, yeah, I want to do stuff, Waves. Or Jay Retard, or Live Fast Die, or Cerebral Ballsy, or run the jewels like you know uh sky ferreira is someone i've been working with recently and it's just it's amazing to get to work with these people it's like uh i very rarely have to say no i don't like what you do or uh it's usually just people who are doing really good stuff and i'm really really psyched to oh to... fuck is there fucking gross used kleenexes in your couch cushion ah oh, jesus christ yes there absolutely is question over here you go let me go wash my hands okay okay We'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. Nick Gazin, you've been associated with a publication known as Vice Magazine. Uh, Let me tell you about Vice Magazine, which I know all about. <clears throat> um, Vice was founded in 1994 by a Canadian man named Sarush Alvi, who was on welfare for being a recovering heroin addict. And since then, that company has grown into a multimedia corporation, of which I've been lucky enough to be employed by, and also turn English when I talk about. I interned for them back in 2001 when I was about 18, 
And I would do real garbagey things like take out the garbage, uh, empty the garbage, sort through the garbage, pick up the mail, drop off the mail, make sure that junkies hadn't stolen the mail. And then my friend, my dear friend Thomas Morton, started became an editor there, and he kind of weaned me back in because I'd weirded out a lot of people back when I was an intern. Like I used to hug this guy a lot who. Uh, uh, later got out of the company I used to hug him too much and uh, I tried to pull off his shirt one time to see his tattoos because I was you know 18 and really fucking weird and didn't know what social boundaries were and uh, I started writing more stuff about comics and art and whatever and just man on street interviews and that gradually became the comic book editor guy and I'd curate in these comics on the site and I still do that <clears throat> and uh, I just got hired as the art editor or, you know, we'll see how long that goes. You know, by the time you see this, I could already have been fired. And my relationship with Vice could have complete, completely done because I fucked up by talking too much about the company in a way that maybe they didn't like this interview. Although I said almost all entirely positive things, I think, right? Uh, boy, I'm bad at interviewing. We have a little bit of a special thing that I'd like to do now. We have a, a write-in question from one of our viewers abroad. Hey. This question comes to us from Skinner. That's one of my best friends. I love that man. And he writes, Dear Nick, if I send you a straight razor and nine dollars, will you shave your fucking neck? But I'll, I'll slip. Yep. Great. So then, as a DJ, what is your ideal night of DJing like? Either uh, some sort of historical event or what's your dream DJ night my dream DJ night <clears throat> okay my dream DJ night a poem by me Nicholas Gazin I'm picked up in an escalade driven by Mr. Swizz Beats he's not falling on hard times he's just psyched to see me Alicia Keys is in the driver's side pass. She doesn't care so much. She's just like being nice to her husband's new hobby of driving amateur New York DJs around. And she's just texting or, you know, thinking about her kids or her career. I don't know. But Swizzy's like, Nick, are you ready to do this? I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm going to get higher than your forehead tonight, man. So he drives me in an Escalade, and there's another Escalade in front and in back. So we've got a good motorcade of Escalade going on tonight. And then we're going to do a big old musical dance arcade. And so we show up at the dance arcade, which is, in, you know, it's like barcade, but I like it. And they serve beers that don't taste like grass and leaves. So I show up, and the DJ booth is rotating, and it's in the center of the room. It's like Hugh Hefner's bed was supposedly in the 60s, where it would rotate and be surrounded by TVs. Except I'm rotating, and I'm in there. I'm playing music. So I throw in a waka flaka. Hard in the paint. Everyone just hears do 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 do. You know, I'm I'm tone deaf. I can't sing, uh, but they all hear that like ter terrifying opening part. It goes, Walker. I go hard in the motherfucking paint. And we're just like losing their minds. They're all like, getting into it. And Swizz Beats is like, he's doing really good right now. And I'm like, thank you, Swizzy, um, for believing in me this whole time. See Gucci, that's my Gucci, that's my Gucci. That's my Gucci. I hang in the jail with them hits. Wait, how much time left do I have in my DJ fantasy smart cave? Smart cave. Smart cave. Smart cave. Smart cave. Smart cave.